Now we're going to derive Faraday's law. Well, almost. What we have done so far is we started with Coulomb's law and with special relativity show that there is a magnetic field, that we can get a magnetic field with current. And here's our Lorentz force law. And we've also seen these three laws here, Gauss's law, Ampere's law, and the Gaussian version in the magnetic field case gives you zero. Well, we move on here to Michael Faraday and the derivation or pseudo derivation of this law. I say pseudo derivation because I'm going to use theoretical physics to show where this can be arrived at with a little bit of uh, coaxing. It's really an experimental result, but let's see if we can get things from theoretical analysis. Well, we're going to start this by looking at magnetic field lines going into the page and having a wire rectangular loop and we're going to pull to the right. Now the Lorentz force law says that when you have velocity in a magnetic field you take the V cross B, V is to the right, B is into the page, V cross B is upward for all the charges as they're moving to the right. These two charges top and bottom want to pop off the wire and they don't they don't give us any current but this one here starts to move upward and that gets, gives us a current in the loop. The length between the left edge and the end of the magnetic field is L. Well what is the velocity V in terms of this L? Well it is going to be here a negative derivative because as we pull to the right to get our velocity V we see that you know, dx dt is negative and dl dt. This L length here decreases in that magnetic field as we move to the right. So the force that we get here is given by the V cross B. So V B is the, uh, the force that we're going to get. And that force can be thought of as a drifting up because an electric field getting a current to flow in a wire. So Q times E, think of it that way, has to be equal to QVB. So that's your force that we're thinking of this as a QE, a generated electric field that's going to give us some current based on the electromotive force idea. So when we do that, we get E is VB, and that's equal to dl dt with the minus sign. Then we look at this in terms of a loop integral where E goes along here, dl and E are parallel and aligned. And when you go over to this part here, there is no dot product giving you something to work with because see here, this is dl going this way and the electric field is pulling upward 90 degrees dot product zero dot product zero there's no e out here to worry about so the only one is this one here and that's going to be my width times the e so the width is the length of that side and that's this integral so when we get that far we can see that this integral is equal to E times W, but I already know what E is here, so if I put the W in there, I have DL DT with the W to B, and then I go to a more generalization where we can pull the wire upward instead of just a side along the X direction, so that I'm really looking at L times W as being the area and I'm changing the area which I can do by pulling a loop through the right or pull it up out of the field region upward the magnetic field region and then we have this equation where we have the, the derivative of the area with respect to the time and since B is constant we can pull the B inside and that gives us the magnetic flux we have the area perpendicular to the B field and then we wonder if 
b were to be a function of time, would this be the correct equation? So here is where the derivation is in quotes, not a real derivation, a 100% derivation. We're going to say this suggests that the b should be kept inside there, and then when you do that, you arrive at the Faraday's law in integral form, and this gives us almost the complete set. We have four of the Maxwell equations. One's not quite complete yet, and that will be the one that at, at the end here it needs modification, but this is Coulomb's law, no magnetic monopoles, Faraday's law, and Ampere's law, and of course the Lorentz force law.